Chivworks Wrestling. Pressure. The first thing we're going to learn about pressure is how it affects our posture. And we're going to do a drill that we call the Mountain Goat Drill. And what this drill teaches you is what your posture should be like under real pressure. We're going to do this drill non-consensual and competitive. Here's how this works. Scotty and I are doing the drill. You're going to take an MMA glove, okay, because this is kind of gentler shiv works. You're going to take this glove and you're going to sandwich this glove between your heads just like so. This is the starting position. Notice Scotty and I are not using our hands, okay? Now, what are we trying to accomplish? Scott's trying to drive me backwards. I'm trying to drive Scott backwards and we're trying to keep from yielding space to the other guy while maintaining connection and not headbutting each other. Now, in the course of this drill, some very specific things are going to come out about your pelvic alignment, which is a huge part and the vast majority of your posture. If Scott pushes through me and I blade and I turn my pelvis and my hips away from him, there's no way with my center and belt buckle facing away from Scott that I can sustain or exert any kind of forward drive and I'm going to lose the drill. So what does that mean? That means your hips have to be facing him, your belt buckle has to be facing him, your plates and your hips have to be square, okay? If Scott manages to push me back on my heels and he bows my pelvis, my butt is tucked up underneath me. There's no way with my butt up underneath me like so that I can sustain or exert any kind of forward drive. I'm gonna back pedal, I'm gonna lose drill, possibly fall. So what does that mean? That means your hips need to be rocked back with what we think of as a lordotic arch in your lower back and your weight has to be forward, okay? Finally, if Scott manages to squat and get the lower center of gravity, he tends to be more stable and more difficult to move and I tend to be easier to move, okay? And I'm gonna lose the drill. So the drill under immediately perceptible real world pressure is gonna teach you three things about your pelvic alignment, which is the bulk of your posture. Number one, it's gonna teach you about the swivel of your hips, and your hips must be square. Number two, it's gonna teach you about the tilt of your pelvic girdle. Your pelvic girdle must be tilted back with your weight forward. Finally, it's gonna teach you about the height of your pelvic girdle, which you change and lower your center of gravity by squatting and not bending at the waist, okay? Squatting keeps your back straight and keeps your head and your hips in the same line, okay? So, three things about your hips. Swivel, tilt, height, okay? We're gonna do three one-minute rounds, non-consensual and competitive, switching partners in between the rounds, okay? You're not using your hands at all. So your head is a focal point for your neck, your spine, and your trunk, all of which equal postural alignment from the base of your pelvis to the crown of your head, okay? Do not let them move you. You must move them. Keep your hips square. Keep your back straight. Squat. Don't bend at the waist. Squat. Don't bend at the waist. Keep your weight forward. If you can't do something as foundational as holding your own space, everything else is a moot point. You must have posture. So we're gonna look at the third P in building a good operating system, that of position. Pressure, posture, and position. Those three P's comprise and are the pillars of a well-running OS, okay? You can usually trace a technical failure of yours back to the fact that your operating system was not running as well as his. He had better posture. He had better position. That's why you couldn't get the underhook. That's why you couldn't get the escape, okay? It usually goes back to the OS. So, position. We're looking at the idea that in wrestling is called cutting the corner, okay? How does this work? The way we're gonna drill this is, Scott and I are gonna start without the glove forehead to forehead, just like so. 
We're gonna do this drill technically and consensually. That means no resistance. We're gonna let each other do this. Scott's gonna give me a little forward pressure. Rather than just fight him by improving my posture, I'm gonna stay in posture, but get to the better position, that angle. I'll get there by stepping with that foot in that direction, all the way over to the flank, turning my hips, driving my head right in the side of his neck. My cheek, my face is right here on his shoulder, his chest, and I'm gonna cut the corner. Now, if you notice my hip position compared to Scott's hip position, I've got the better angle. Scott's gonna let me do that. He's not gonna fight me or try and face me. Once I do that, I'm gonna push him for a step or two so I can feel how I'm cutting, cutting through his center line and how my hip drive is affecting him. He's gonna let me do that, okay? When I'm ready for him to step out and cut the corner, I'm gonna tap him that lets Scott know, hey buddy, it's your turn. Now it's his turn. He'll step out and cut the corner. I'm not gonna fight him. I'm gonna let him take that position. He'll push me as long as he wants when he's ready for me to change and cut the corner. He'll tap me, now it's my turn, okay? I'll step, cut the corner, Scott's turn. He'll step, cut the corner, my turn, okay, whenever he pats. And all this drill is teaching you is what a dominant, advantageous position looks and feels like and how to get there, okay? You have to have this. You have to be able to understand attacking from the flanks, cutting the corner, getting on the angle, whatever you want to call it, okay? But the idea is dominant position, okay? All right, guys, technical and consensual. Pair up, drill that, go.